Hello, this is Julie Clark, Managing Editor at Smart Edition Media, and today we are going to talk about how to identify the author's purpose. So one of the skills that is often assessed in the reading section of the TEAS exam is how to identify the author's purpose. So today we're going to learn how to do so uh, to help you to successfully answer those types of questions on the exam. So what is the author's purpose? Well, any time a writer puts words to paper, they do it for a reason, and that reason is the author's purpose. It's really as easy as pie. There are three basic reasons, to persuade, P, to inform, I, and to entertain, E. See? Simple. With persuasive texts, writers try to convince their readers to believe a certain point of view or to take a specific action. Oftentimes, you'll see words like should, and other words that convey judgment. This is a clue that the writer is sharing an opinion for the purpose of persuading you to do something or to believe in what he's saying. Another reason that an author might put pen to paper is to inform the reader about a subject. Informational texts are designed to share knowledge, so it could be a cookbook that contains recipes to help you prepare a delicious meal, or a local newsletter that tells residents about what is happening in their neighborhood informational texts are based on fact and logic. And the third reason an author might write is simply to entertain. Think of funny stories, silly poems, even a novel with a juicy storyline that keeps you flipping pages late into the evening. If this is the case, then the author has certainly achieved her goal of entertaining you. Now sometimes it's easy to determine an author's passage and other times it might take a little more sleuthing. So here is a strategy that can help you to figure it out. Ask yourself as you're reading, why did the author write this? Underline or jot down any ideas that you have in the margins if that helps you. What does the author want me to learn or think as a result of reading this passage? These are two questions you can keep in mind as you are reading. Jot things down, underline if you're able to, and that'll help you to figure out which of the three pieces of pie is the reason. Is the author persuading, informing, or entertaining? So once you're done reading, you can ask yourself the simple question. The author wrote this mostly to A. Present information and explain new information. B. Argue a point or convince me to agree to a specific opinion. Or C. Provide entertainment. One of those three answers will help you to determine what the reason is. Let's take a look at how this works. Here's a passage you might see on the exam. In fact, we're going to read two passages, both about a similar topic, written by two different writers, and for two different purposes. Let's look at passage one. Many people find termites to be destructive little pests, but they are actually ingenious little creatures. If you were to look at a termite mound, you would see firsthand how incredible these insects really are. These masters of construction work together to erect high-functioning green energy skyscrapers out of nothing but soil, saliva, and dung. The largest one documented is in the Democratic Republic of Congo. This mound, measuring 12.8 meters, 41.9 feet tall, has heat regulation and air conditioning systems. It also contains numerous chambers for food storage, gardens, and babies. And just think, a termite is less than one centimeter long, yet it is still capable of building a sophisticated structure that is over 2,000 times its size. So a question you might see on the exam, what is the purpose of the first paragraph of passage one? So here we're just being asked not about the entire passage, but just the first paragraph, just those first two sentences. Let's look at the answer choices before we begin reviewing that first paragraph again. I see something that's kind of a red flag to me here. I know that there are only three reasons why an author might write a passage, to persuade, to inform, and to entertain. Now notice how I said those in order of pi. P -I -E, but that's not the way they appear in my answer choices. That's okay, it's that acronym that helps me to remember the word and not so much that it has to be in that order. 
what isn't part of the acronym PIE is answer choice B to distract. Distracting the reader is not generally a reason that an author writes a passage. And so right off the bat, I look at B and cross that off my list. That is not going to be my answer that I select. So what is the purpose of the first paragraph? In the first sentence, there's a big clue. The author starts out by saying, these termites are destructive little pests, kind of a negative connotation of these critters. And in the second part, he says, but they're actually ingenious little creatures. And so I look at that and think, okay, what is he trying to do there? He's telling me that while most people think they're not really cool, in fact, they really are. They're amazing insects. And so in that very first passage, paragraph to the passage, uh, I believe that he's actually trying to persuade me that termites are amazing insects, even though most people think of them as pests. And so I'm going to choose answer choice C to persuade. And if that was the choice that I made, I would be 100% correct. Now, if the question asked about paragraph two in this passage, that might come out differently because when I look at that paragraph, I realize that there's a lot of information being provided there. In paragraph two, the author's actually informing me about why termites are these ingenious little creatures. So you can see two things here. Number one, you have to read the question very carefully. What part of the passage am I being asked to analyze? And number two, in the same passage with multiple paragraphs and even sometimes within the same paragraph, there might be clues that um, the writer's using some information to support their reasons to persuade you, to inform you, or to entertain you. Um, so one passage might actually contain multiple strategies and tactics um, that lead you to believe what the purpose of that passage is. So you have to really look at overall what is the message that the author is trying to convey. Let's take a look at another passage. Passage two. Again, this one's going to be about those little creatures, the termites. So as we hiked along the dusty trail deep within the Congo, our tour guide suddenly stopped and held up his hand. Panic rose inside me, as I expected to see a ghastly hyena or other vicious predator in our midst. But he slowly pointed towards a large mound off the side of the path. What on earth? It rose high above us, a tall, sandy structure with arms outstretched to the sky. This, he began in a whisper, so as not to disturb, disturb its inhabitants, is a termite mound. Inside are thousands of termites. These tiny little insects have worked together to build this massive structure. And not only is it oops, ventilated to keep them cool, but there are tons of little rooms or chambers inside for different purposes. Whoa, a termite mound. How on earth did those pesky little bugs do that? So let's look at our question. In this question, we're being asked, what is the purpose? What is the primary purpose of passage two? Is it to, oh no, is it to inform, to distract, persuade, or entertain? And when I look at that question, I realize that this entire story is just that. It's a story. It's not really persuading me of anything. It's a dialogue between the narrator who's telling the story with some language there from the tour guide. And so it really is an entertaining story about coming upon a termite mound um, in the middle of a hike in the Congo. And so this story is meant to de-entertain the reader. Um, so you can see that even with the same subject, between one passage to another, writers can have different reasons for writing about a subject. And those reasons would be to persuade, to inform, or to entertain. If you remember that the author's purpose is as easy as pie, you will remember the way to 
select one of those answer choices correctly when you're analyzing passages during your TEAS exam. Good luck on your exam, and we will see you next time in our next tutorial video. Bye!